Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and we have a very special video for today. Uh, I'm joined by Zachary, who is a former Ape Scholar, not one of mine, uh, but he's an Ape Scholar who has quite an accomplishment, and that's that he scored a perfect Apes exam in 2023. He got every single question right. That's 80 out of 80 on the MCQ, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 on the FRQ section. And Zachary, we want to hear a little bit about your story. How did you even learn that this is how you had scored on the APES exam? So I was not at all expecting to receive a perfect score. I found out with everyone else in July that I got a five on the AP exam, and I was very excited about that. And then in September, I received an email from College Board. And at first, I just wasn't even sure what it was. And as I was reading through, I saw that I had earned a perfect score on the AP environmental science exam. It said it was the only score and perfect score in the world on that exam. And it was signed by Trevor Packer, the head of AP. Wow. So T Pack himself, the Pac Man, as some people call him, sent you a personal email uh letting you know you had a perfect score. And it was the only one. That is wild. What what did it feel like? What were you thinking when you opened that email and read to the bottom of it? I was uh, like completely blown away. I could not believe that I did that well. I was so excited. I immediately <laughs> ran to tell my parents. The next yeah. day at school, I went to tell my teacher. She almost cried. She was so happy. Yeah, I, I, bet. I can't imagine if one of my ape scholars got a perfect score. That That is unreal. Um, that's phenomenal. Well, part of the reason you're here, Zachary, is because this year's ape scholars would love to learn about your approach. So the first question that we have for you today in this short interview is what habits or practices allowed you to be so successful, specifically in your APES class? So not necessarily just on the exam, but what set the stage in your APES class? I think throughout the year, I did a pretty good job of taking notes of our content. We had almost daily lectures in my APES class, and I took handwritten notes for each one. I personally like doing handwritten notes the best, but find what works for you if you prefer typing or something like that. And then before each of our classroom tests, I would really review my notes and other um, resources we received in class to make sure I understood it. I took the test very seriously as well as our practice FRQs. And I think that really prepared me to do well on the actual exam. Yeah, I, it sounds like it. <laughs> uh, I want to poke a little bit on the word review. When, when you say review, I think a lot of students might think sitting down and rereading their notes, which a lot of data shows is not all that effective. Did you have a different approach rather than just rereading notes? So I did reread um, re my notes definitely at first, but I would also sometimes like study with my friends, like we would quiz each other or ask questions or things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's key. I think quizzing yourself is really helpful. And I noticed that my students will quiz each other sometimes too. And it adds kind of an element of fun and like unity to the class. I think that's a great suggestion. Uh, great. What was your approach then to preparing for the exam in May? And then, you know, when did you start preparing for the exam in May and what either resources or strategies do you think were really useful for you? So as I shifted into reviewing for the exam, I started a few weeks before in April I did purchase the Princeton Review book for apes. I read through all of the um, like content they provided and it kind of gave me a different perspective from what I'm seeing in class. And then I took advantage of their practice um, tests and practice MCQ, as well as going back towards to my class notes and resources. Great. Did you find that you were maybe reviewing a topic or part of a unit and then taking practice MCQs or practice FRQs on that the same day, like later in the week, did you pair that kind of review really closely with the actual rereading of notes? I usually try to do it on the same day. Like if like, let's say I would review like uh, um, ecology or something like that. And then I would do like the practice MCQ that came in the book on that same day. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. From what I know about retrieval practice, I almost try to remind students that it's like hitting the save button. So after you've reread something or you've read a new resource, like the Princeton Review, I, I like that you added in a new source that's separate from what you read in class. Think of those practice MCQs and especially those practice FRQs almost as, yeah, hitting the save button. You're checking is where it's stored in my memory, really storing it. Can I retrieve it and get it out when I need it? That's great. Um, what tips do you have for students to improve their FRQ writing? 
And these tips could be general. So tips they might take all year thematically thinking about it, or they could be very exam specific. Like I went in this order, or this is how I approached each of the different FRQs. Mm -hmm. I did, would definitely agree that the FRQ was the more challenging section of the exam for me because you did have to like retrieve the content and explain it. I think the first thing I focused on was really looking at the verbs and reading the question carefully to make sure that I knew exactly what it was asking. Like if it said to explain that like I was giving an accurate explanation, like fully describing it, things like that. And then also... I wanted to make sure that when I was including like a key term or something like that, that I wasn't leaving it to the reader to figure out like what I meant, how that would affect it. Like not just writing like say global warming and say like saying how global warming would affect the specific process that I was referring to in the question. And something else that I did find helpful was skipping over the ones that I thought were harder or couldn't think of right away and um, like using just reasoning to kind of get through the ones that I was less sure about. Like there was one part in particular that I really could not think of like the answer that they were probably going for. So I try to use like logic and things that I have learned to come up with something. Yeah, that is a phenomenal approach. Uh, I really want to emphasize what you said there at the end. Go through the questions and use your your kind of highest uh, mental energy, the, the most brain power you have on those questions you know that you have the answer to, but that you just have to articulate right. And skip over those really tough questions. And then as Zachary is saying, come back to them and use whatever you can to try to put together a reasonable answer, but don't be so concerned that you have to answer them all in the order that they're laid out. Did you find that somewhat... Uh, reassuring or somewhat freeing to to know that you didn't have to go directly in the order and you could skip around a bit. Yeah, and it definitely helped that I had taken like some other AP exams prior to APES and saw that it was possible on those tests to sub as well. Yeah, yeah, and I would guess that also answering all of the practice FRQs and taking those practice exams you took gave you some confidence of the structure so that you know where all these questions are and how to flip back and find the ones that you haven't answered. Yeah, of course. Great, great. So the next part is kind of two different pieces of advice depending on where students are in the year. Some students will watch this with two weeks left to prepare for the exam. So what do you have to say to students who are starting to prepare with two weeks to go? So I think it's really important that they have a solid understanding of the essential concepts within each unit but not only thinking it like specific to each unit, but also how they relate to each other, since that will help with the critical thinking skills that the FRQs especially will be testing. And then also I would recommend reviewing all of the math that could appear on the AP exam, since knowing how to do the math problems would will make those points like relatively easy to earn since there's no explanation required on those. You just have to show your calculations. Yeah, the math tip is critical, you guys. Zachary is spot on. There's um, six different FRQ points that are math-based. So that's 20% of the FRQ section of the exam. And he's right. You, there's no explanation needed. If you know how to do those types of calculations, they're very straightforward. Your teachers may have practice packets for you. There's also a video, though, on my YouTube channel. I'll make sure it's linked in the video description. 15, 17-minute long video that will walk you through every type of problem you need to do. Uh, and so that can make you really confident on those math questions. And that should be a huge, a huge help. The second point that Zachary emphasized is, or the first point he emphasized is a really good one in that you want to think thematically. You want to think about how what you're reviewing about ecosystems is related to how what you're learning about climate change. There's also some frame reviews that are in the free preview of the ultimate review packet that you can use to do that. They're going to ask you these exact type of prompts that it sounds like Zachary sort of intuited were useful to use which is, again, how does this content I'm learning about in Unit 2 connect to this content I'm learning about, in learning, learning, learning about in Unit 9, not just thinking of these as like siloed units that are all separate. Uh, so if you want to check those out, um, go to the Ultimate Review Packet, and there's a template that can just get you thinking in that way. Now, on the other hand, Zachary, what advice do you have for eight students who are just starting out their year? I'm sure there will be students who are watching this next year in August when their school year is starting, and what advice do you have for them? So 
First of all, I would recommend that they um, kind of figure out what kind of note taking or learning strategies works for them. And then they can be consistent with that throughout the year and then have something to go back to when they review for the exam in April. And then beyond just taking the AP environmental science class, I would recommend that they may, if they're really interested in the environment, finding some other opportunity in their school or their community to get involved. I know at my school, I was part of a competition called Envirothon based on environmental science. So learning the skills there was really helpful for me to use them in APES. And I volunteered with some local environmental organizations where I saw environmental problems in the real world and what people were doing to fix them. That's an awesome answer. I think that probably made your year in APES more meaningful, I would guess, mm -hmm. as well. When you feel like what you're learning is also being put into action in the real world. Uh, I'll just chime in with a plug as well. Citizens Climate Lobby is an awesome um, bipartisan group that has chapters all over the United States and actually all over the world. And so Zachary alluded to some uh, local groups that he got involved with, but those would be local to you know his school in Texas. So if you search uh, CCL or Citizens Climate Lobby, there should be a chapter near you. And that would be a great example of an organization you could get involved with that would probably make your APES experience more meaningful and also help you see how what you're learning in the classroom plays out in the real world in terms of legislation, in terms of conservation and, and advocacy. So that's that's really a phenomenal tip. Thank you for that one, Zachary. So my next question is what advice you have for APES teachers? And maybe tell us a little bit about your APES teacher who I have to assume played quite a role in you earning a perfect AP exam score. You know, those don't just happen by accident. Mm -hmm. I would definitely like to recognize my APES teacher, Mrs. Coffey. She did a phenomenal job throughout the year. She really clearly explained the content in our lectures, but beyond that, she gave us opportunities to expand our knowledge through things such as labs or projects, and we even took two field trips. The one that I thought was especially valuable was pretty close to the AP exam in April. We went to a state forest that was nearby, and then we had um, an assignment there where we got to look for instances of each of the concepts we learned in apes in the real world. Wow, that sounds awesome. Yeah. I, I want to do that project. <laughs> sounds really fun. Did you take pictures? Did you sort of document, like, did you have a clipboard? How did you actually document or communicate to, to Mrs. Coffee the instances in that park of all of those concepts you'd learned? Yeah, so prior to beginning, she gave us like a rubric of everything that we had to include. We had things like there were some options from each unit that we could pick to put in our final project that we would turn in. So when we went to the forest, we did take pictures. We had ourselves in it so that she could verify we actually took them there and didn't just pull them from the internet. And then we made like a PowerPoint presentation and gave some explanation for each as how to relate it and related to the apes concepts. That's awesome. I, I really like that project idea. So, mm -hmm. so thank you uh, to Mrs. Coffey for that contribution to your students and probably to some other teachers who may try something similar now. That's such a great idea. So question number seven uh, is what are you doing now? So maybe tell us a little bit about your senior year and kind of what you learned from apes that you still feel has kind of gone with you into this next year that you're in and, and maybe into college beyond? Mm -hmm. So this year I'm taking seven more AP classes. So I have found like some of the concepts I've learned in APES, especially applicable to AP biology. We just finished our last unit, which was ecology, which was almost essentially the same as things that we learned in APES. And beyond that, in APES, I've also developed many more writing and critical thinking skills that continue to be applied to my other AP classes. And as for my future plans, I'm planning to major in environmental engineering next year. I have not decided which college I will attend yet. Gotcha. That's awesome. I love when an APE scholar has a really great experience and when they have exam success, those are things we hope for as teachers. But when a student also discovers that it might be something that they want to do as a career, as a future course of study, that's just so cool. And I think for Mrs. Coffey, your teacher, and for any APES teacher out there who has a student who considers environmental science as a career, it just makes us really feel like you took something valuable from our course. So I hope she sees this and I hope she feels like she made a great contribution to your future plans. 
Uh, the final question is kind of a fun one. Uh, on, on the channel here, we have two slogans or two mantras, think like a mountain and write like a scholar. And this was actually recently asked in the comment section of a video, is it more important to think like a mountain or write like a scholar? So why don't you give us your opinion, Zachary? So I think that it's more important to write like a scholar because with the way that the AP exam is graded, you can know what you're doing, but not like answer the question in the right way and then you wouldn't get credit for it. But if you um, work on your writing strategies and make sure that you're answering the question and fulfilling the expectations in addition to knowing the content, then you can be successful on the AP exam. All right, you heard it here from Zachary. It's more important to write like a scholar. So maybe I need to switch the order write like a scholar, <laughs> think like a mountain. I just put them in that order because you think and then you write what you think about. But you're right, from exam pragmatism, how are we going to actually earn the most points possible? We've got to be able to write effectively. We've got to be able to write clearly and use vocabulary and, and really articulate our ideas. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in today. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to get to know Zachary, learn a little bit more about his story. And Zachary, do you have any kind of final sign off any words of wisdom to these ape scholars as they get ready for their exam i just like to wish everyone good luck who's preparing for this year and any future ap environmental science exam awesome all right we'll do a dual sign off here because you like the write like a scholar phrase better so i'll say think like a mountain and then you can say write like a scholar are you ready mm -hmm. all right everybody think like a mountain write like a scholar